All right. So this lesson is about acid base. We learned how to name acids and bases on Friday. So today we're just going to talk about the properties of acids and bases. What are acids and what are bases? And learn about pH. Okay. And then also the pH scale and how indicators work. So basically all about acid and base in a nutshell. Let us start by doing this exercise. I have here eight items. And I, what I want you to do is I'm going to go through the list and you can either uh, type in the chat or just say whether you think the content of it is acidic or basic. A for acid, B for base. Okay, so let's start with the battery. The insides of a battery, A or B, which one is it, guys? Uh, I was fast. A. Anyone else? Any other answers? Or do you all agree that it is A? Oh. Really? Just. Can you guys hear me? I mean, I see a few. Okay, so I need you guys to type A or B in the chat. What do you think? Oh, well, if you don't know, then, then just tell me you don't know. Most people says, um a so yeah batteries are acidic okay, your car battery um your parents car it's extremely acidic it's actually very dangerous if there's a leak there's a huge problem and batteries if one dies you shouldn't just throw that out in the garbage okay you, ha you should have like a special way of throwing them out um, contain them in like a little box because of the content of the battery is quite dangerous. You don't want to put that in a landfill. Okay, so there's acid inside of batteries. Uh, the next one is a vial of blood. Uh, what do you think? You can say neutral. You can write N. Okay, a few Bs. A lot of Ns. Okay, so it depends on how technical you want to get. Blood is slightly basic. It is very close to neutral. Okay, in fact, it's pretty much neutral, but if you want to be technical, it is not perfectly neutral. It tips to the balance of the base side. So yes, yeah, slightly basic. Oranges, uh, orange juice, the insides of an orange. Okay, that's, that's a fairly easy one. I see just straight A's. Okay, yeah, that's easy. Oranges are acidic. It's sour, and acids are known to be very sour. Okay, the next one, Drano. I don't know if you've seen that. If your drain clogs, either um, in the sink, in the kitchen, or in the bathroom, let's say there's hair or food, what do you think? You pour that down the drain to fix it. A or B? Oh, a lot of A's. Wow, um, you're actually all wrong. That's basic. I understand why you think that would be acidic because you want acids to burn through whatever is clogging the drain, right? If you have hair or if you have food, yeah, acid should melt that. We actually use base uh, to protect the pipes. Uh, the pipes, if it's a metal, then there is a chance that it could react with the acid. Um, we, avoid that so we use the base uh, bases don't typically react with metals okay um yeah you know what that is the next one dna that's an easy one okay so i'm getting again straight a's well dna not dnb deoxyribonucleic acid so that must be an acid okay what about a detergent Okay, B. 
Do you think detergent is an acid or a base? Think about it. Um, do you use acid or base to wash your clothes? And if you actually smell it, does it smell sour or does it smell something different? So the answer is B, a basic. You might be seeing, an, seeing a pattern here. If it's a cleaning agent like Drano or Tide, it kind of is bitter. Not that I would know. I never tasted it, but I'd imagine it would be. Uh, bases are supposed to be bitter. Blood is a little bitter. Um, whereas orange, well, DNA you can't taste, but orange and the next one, lemon. Well, I want that. Lemon is probably the easiest one in here. Yeah, if you ever tasted a lemon, it's extremely sour. It's obviously acidic. I've had students in the past that try to tell me, they try to argue that lemon is a base. I don't know what to say. No. Actually, yeah, no, I actually made it part of this lesson. It's not directly aimed at those uh, students in the past. Uh, but that got me thinking, why did they think lemon is a base? Because anyone that tasted lemon would know it's extremely sour. It must be acidic. There's citric acid in there. So that's acid. We're going to talk a little bit more about lemons. Okay, last one is vinegar. That one is also very, very obvious. And vinegar, yep, it's acidic. It's acetic acid. Okay, so look, the sour stuff is acidic. The bitter stuff is basic. And notice acids are things you can eat, oranges, lemons, and vinegar. Well, that's food. You don't eat detergents. You don't drink Drano. Uh, hopefully not. Okay, so those are bases, and bases are not supposed to be edible most of the time. So that's a little exercise to see. Do you know an acid when you see one? All right, so here, here's my little life skill part of this lesson. Have you ever heard of alkaline water and its supposed health benefits? Um, if you drink alkaline water, you, you derive many benefits from that. One, it helps neutralize your body's acidity by balancing the pH in the blood. That sounds good. Okay, you, you need the pH in the blood to be balanced. It also removes acidic minerals to create more alkaline water base. Okay, whatever that means. It prevents and treats degenerative diseases of the body. You obviously want to treat diseases of your body. High concentration of calcium, potassium, and magnesium. Those sounds like great minerals to have. It hydrates the body better than bottled and tap water. Oh, wow. It prevents diseases by lowering the acidic state of your body. You don't want your body to be acidic, do you? That sounds extremely dangerous. And also, it slows down the aging process by reducing the amount of free radical damage and whatever that means. So, um, buy alkaline water today. Stop drinking from the tap. Okay, this is an ad that you can see from a lot of places. A quick Google search of alkaline diet or alkaline water give you a whole bunch of pictures. In fact, when I made this lesson, I wanted to get some nice pictures from the internet. So I Googled, um, what did I Google? pH scale. Yeah, I wanted a beautiful picture of a pH scale. And then boom, uh, Google gives me a lot of these ads for acidic diets, alkaline diets, um, the pH of water and how healthy that is. I'm like, what am I reading? This has to be insane. So these claims, um, they're actually very common on the internet. Okay, I know many people personally, they subscribe to these claims very religiously. Alkaline water all the way. Health, health, health. There's lots of health nuts out there. I'm not saying being healthy is bad, but you have to be scientific. Acidic body is unhealthy, whereas alkaline body is healthy. And you don't want an acidic body, so therefore drink alkaline water. Okay, that seems like it makes sense. If it's true. Yeah, but once the water hits your stomach, doesn't it all turn into acid? It mixes with the acid of the stomach. Yes, your stomach is acidic. So drinking alkaline water, by the way, it can't be that basic because you will die if it is.
Yeah, everything in the stomach, the stomach, the acid will come out and neutralize the base. Anyway, that's not the only thing wrong with it, though. Excuse me. The whole premise that the acidic body is unhealthy, whereas the alkaline body is healthy, that makes no scientific sense. And I hope by the end of this lesson, you will recognize uh, the absurdity in claims such as these. Okay, acidic body is the cause of many diseases such as cancer, osteoporosis, um, that is completely bogus. In fact, the other way around is correct. If you have cancer, then that cancer will produce a more acidic environment. A causes B, not the other way around. Okay, so cancer causes the acidity, the acidity doesn't cause the cancer. So there are many falsehoods being spread. They sound scientific to the uninitiated. They all sound like scientific jargon. You know, doctors say this, this guy in a white lab coat on YouTube says that. Oh, they must be true. And I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want my kids to be unhealthy. So you know what? I'm going to go with this. So I need to adopt an alkaline diet. Drink alkaline water. So they buy these machines. These machines will make your water more alkaline. So you don't just drink from the tap. You don't boil your water. You just put it into this machine and let it filter it, add some negative ions or add some alkaline ions. It comes out alkaline water. You drink it, improve the health. Okay, alkaline diet. Fruits and vegetables, by the way, are alkaline diets. So I finally know why those students claim lemon to be basic. Because lemons are fruits, and fruits are alkaline. So therefore, lemons are alkaline. That's their logic. So this is complete bullcrap. Okay, alkaline diet. There is no such thing. And we're gonna. We're not. I'm just not. I'm not gonna just tell you this is bullcrap. I'm gonna teach you the science behind acid and base, and then you apply that to this and. Apply your knowledge that we learned in biology with this to see for yourself whether this is true or not. Okay, again, the purpose of this course is for you to distinguish facts from garbage. Okay, and this is one of the garbage that's floating in the, on the internet. Okay, so some properties of acids and base first. An acid, well, what is an acid? That's kind of hard to describe. It's an aqueous solution. That uh, means it's dissolved in water. Acids conduct electricity really well, and if you taste acids, they're going to taste sour. You're not supposed to taste acid, by the way. Um, some acids you can eat like inside of food, and they're typically all sour, but don't taste acids you find in the lab. Never do that. And if you dip litmus paper, uh, it turns the blue ones red, and it neutralizes base. So basically, these are some properties of acids. They release Hydrogen ions, H+, plus, when they are dissolved in water like this. So HCl, hydrochloric acid. Once you dissolve that in water, you have the hydrogen ions, H+, plus, and the chloride ions, the Cl negative. Okay. Acid must be able to produce hydrogen. Or you can have like vinegar right there, acetic acid. Again, if you put that in water, notice the states are aqueous. You have hydrogen ions plus, well, the rest of it, the acetate ions. Okay, so again, remember, guys, if you can release hydrogen in water, you are an acid. And these are extremely corrosive. If you ever touch concentrated acid, it's going to hurt. Right? I know from personal experience, um, I wasn't very careful um, when I was in university. I... I touched a lot of acids, and boy, did they hurt. I dipped sulfuric acid on my hand. It was quite concentrated. Hydrochloric acid I got on my hands. Yeah, that wasn't fun. And also, acids will react with metal. All right, um, I don't know if you did this in grade 9. I know certainly in my class we didn't because that, that wasn't a thing in grade 9. We were supposed to do a lab in grade 10 where you get to see the different types of reactions, and one of them is a metal inside of an acid. Uh, the metal is bubbling because of the acid, and slowly the metal disappears because the acid will melt. Well, it will react with the metal. 
Okay, so a base. Um, the base, you can think of this as the opposite of an acid. It is also an aqueous solution. And if you were to taste it, again, don't, it's going to taste bitter. All right, if you ever lick soap or your detergent, uh, shampoo, those are bitter. Okay, they feel slippery. If you ever feel base in the lab, like sodium hydroxide, for example, again, I, I've touched that many times, not on purpose because that hurts. It actually feels very slippery, like oil. It conducts electricity well, just like acids, and it turns the red litmus blue. So what do bases do? Sodium hydroxide is a classic base. It releases hydroxide ions, OH. Uh, we're, are we going to do that? because we're going into class actually yeah um i could do that yeah uh, but then the online students wouldn't be able to you can you can you can watch so yeah well, once we go back to the lab uh we can actually do something like that yes now uh, thank you for reminding me okay so uh, sodium hydroxide breaks into hydroxide ions and sodium ions calcium hydroxide it breaks into calcium ions and hydroxide ions. Okay, does that make sense? So basically, bases release hydroxide ions. And also, bases are also um, very corrosive, just like acid. They will also hurt you. So it doesn't matter if you dip your hands in acid or base, they're going to hurt you, and you, you're going to lose some skin and some flesh either way. So they're also very, very dangerous. And bases, normally, they don't react with metals uh, with like a few exceptions. And I do have some videos to show you, but I will show you at the end of the class uh, because of copyright and YouTube and all that. So um, someone remind me at, at the end, because these videos are actually quite interesting. Yeah, this one, I can't show you that because it's copyrighted, it's from another YouTube video What's and that? I can't steal that. So there. anyway, um, acids and bases are all electrolytes. Okay, and electrolytes conduct electricity just like ionic compounds dissolved in water so you can actually use that hook up a battery and see the light bulb glow and actually i can demonstrate that once we get back to school but pure water doesn't have this effect because pure water doesn't have ions so a solution will be a good electrolyte if it has ions Ionic compounds dissolve to form ions, so therefore, that's an electrolyte. Acids and bases also dissolve to form ions, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So therefore, they're also good conductors of electricity. So salt solutions are good conductors. All acids and bases are good conductors, are good electrolytes. Excuse me. Okay, do we have any questions about that property? Okay. So here is the pH scale. You may have heard this before, uh, the pH of something. Uh, the pH is how we use to measure acidity versus alkalinity, how acidic or how basic a solution is. We give it a number, just, um, just like many other scales that humans come up with. There's the Richter scale for earthquake. Now, if there's an earthquake, we assign it a number, and that number should tell us how severe or how irrelevant that earthquake is. So the pH scale works the same way. You have a scale um, from 0 to 14. 0 being you're very acidic, and if the pH is 14, you are very basic. Okay, in, in the middle seven, you are neutral. Okay, so if, if your pH is between zero and seven, that's acidic. If it's between seven and 14, that's neutral. Now take a look at this pH scale. Look at the items that resemble each pH number. What can you tell me about the acids? What are they? mostly have in common anybody and same thing for the basis what do they mostly have in common uh, 
Daisy, nobody sees the pattern. Hydrogen, no, no, I'm talking about the pictures. Look at the, the pictures on the pH scale. The acids, you have, well, stomach acid. You have lemon, grapes, tomatoes, banana, milk. Uh, food, thank you. The acids, a lot of them are foods. Okay, the foods that we eat are acidic. Well, except eggs. Eggs are slightly basic. Uh, but look at the, the basis. A uh, baking soda, well, that's used in food. You don't just take a spoonful and eat it. Soap, ammonia, bleach, oven cleaner, um, they all sound terrible to ingest. And they're all cleaning agents. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. So, already, alkaline diet. Think about what that says. Basic food. Yeah, no, we don't eat basic food. Okay, does that make sense? So neutral is in the middle. Water is neutral. Okay, pure water is, is neither an acid nor a base. It's in the middle. Okay, so let's move on. Well, how do we get these numbers, though? And what do those numbers actually mean? So pH measures the concentration of H plus and OH. The higher the concentration of hydrogen, the lower the pH. Okay, so take a look at this figure. Near the top, you have some really highly acidic substances. At pH of zero, you have battery acid. Look at the concentration of the hydrogen ion compared to water. It is 10 million times higher than normal water. pH of one is your stomach acid. That is 1 million times higher than pure water. Lemon juice pH two is 100,000 times and then 10,000, 1,000. So this goes down by orders of magnitude. That means it goes down by 10. It doesn't go down by one, two, three. Every difference in the pH is the difference of 10 times. So the lower the pH, the more hydrogen ions you have. At neutral, you have equal amounts of hydrogen and hydroxide. And if you go down, look near the bottom, 14. Basic solutions, you don't have a lot of hydrogen. You have one over 10 million. That's one in a million. And then 13 is, sorry, um, 14 is one in 10 million, kind of like the odds of winning the lottery. 13 is one in 1 million. 12 is one in 100,000. And then one in 10,000, one in 1,000, and so on. Okay, so as you can see, if you're more basic, you have a lot fewer hydrogen ions. So really you're counting how much hydrogen ions we have. Okay, so that's the pH. The higher the hydrogen means the lower the hydroxide and vice versa. These two are antagonistic. If you have higher hydrogen, you will have lower hydroxide. And if you have higher hydroxide, you will have lower hydrogen or they can be equal, that is neutral. Okay, you can have a lot of one, but then you have very little of the other. It's like a trade-off. Neutral means you have the same amounts of hydrogen and hydroxide. So that's what we mean when we talk about acidity, uh, alkalinity versus neutral. We're talking about how much H pluses is there in this solution. Okay, is that clear, everyone? Okay, the pH scale, like I said before, is logarithmic. What does that mean? It means a difference of pH of one is a tenfold difference in acidity. So going from a pH of zero to a pH of one, that pH of zero is 10 times more acidic than that pH of one. And that pH of one is 10 times more acidic than two. Okay, so a difference of two means a hundred times difference. If you just do the math, 10 times 10. That's a hundred times. All right, so it, yeah, it does matter if you just move up or down the scale by simply one. Okay, lemon is a pH of 
around two or three. Your stomach acid is the pH of one and two. That doesn't seem like a huge difference, but it is. Stomach acid is very acidic and corrosive. It is there to dissolve food. Lemon, it's just sour, but it, it shouldn't dissolve you. If you throw up, if you vomit, your esophagus will feel very sour and tingly and a little bit painful because the stomach acid will rise up into your esophagus, into your mouth, and that hurts a little. You can drink lemonade and you're fine. Okay, and also you can compare across the entire pH table. So a pH of five compared to a pH of eight, you just count, well, how many tens do I have? How many tens does, does it take? To get from five to eight, well, you got to do it three times. Five plus three is eight. So I need to times 10 three times. That's a thousand. So a pH of five is 1,000 times more acidic than a pH of eight. It's not three times. It's a thousand times. Okay, so we need to know how to do math uh, with the pH table. Every time you move over, you times 10. Okay, so in front of you, let's say you have a beaker, and in the beaker you have the solution. You want to know whether this is an acid or a base. You can't tell just by looking because they both look just like water, so there must be something you can do. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to, you know, pour some out and do some experiment, then you will lose some. So what you can do is you can use an indicator. An acid-base indicator is a substance that once you apply it to the acid and base, it will change color and it will tell you whether this is an acid or a base depending on the color change. So there are many different types of indicators out there. there are, some are more common than others. For example, um, litmus, the one in the middle, the red versus blue, that's a very common one. Acid will make litmus red, base will turn litmus blue. If phenolphthalein is another common one, acid, well, nothing happens if you put phenolphthalein into acid, it looks still colorless. But if you put it in base, it turns into this nice magenta pink color. Okay, we actually have all of these in the lab. Yeah, when we go back, please remind me to show you. This is actually pretty fascinating and cool to watch the color change. So that way you can tell whether something is acidic or basic. Well, if you notice that... Okay, let me just go back for a few sec. If you notice, look, each of these indicators, they only have two colors. Red or yellow. Yellow or blue. Red or blue. Okay, colorless or pink, blue or yellow. They all have one, oh, sorry, they all have two colors. What if you mix some of these together, right? Because if you only have two colors, you can only tell whether it's an acid or a base. It doesn't tell you what's a pH, okay? Because a pH of zero and a pH of five, they're both acidic, you're going to get the same color. So... The universal indicator gives you a rainbow. And where on the rainbow do you have that tells you the pH? So if you mix three of those indicators together, bromodiamo blue mixed with methyl orange mixed with phenolphthalein, and then you dip it into a gradient of acids starting from pH 0 to pH 14 into the bases, you will get that. Nice and pretty. And then you can just look at the color and estimate. So this is pH, I don't know, 7 because it's in the middle. It's green. The more purple it is, the more basic, the more red it is, well, the more acidic. Okay, so this is the universal indicator. It's a mix of three indicators. So acid means orange. That would be an acid. If you dip universal indicator and you get a purple color, that means it's a base. And lastly, if you have this color, it is neutral. So what that means is you take water, you dip some of this in, the water turns green. It should turn green. Um, I once measured the pH of rain. 
acid rain, it turns out. It turned yellow. It wasn't green. So the pH of rain water is a, is a little bit more acidic than normal water. That, that tells you something about the environment. How do we use pH in our lives? Well, you don't really use it in your lives, well, at least not yet, but other people um, in specific professions do, like farmers. Um, we need to grow food. And we know that plants grow in very specific, uh, specific soil conditions. Some plants prefer slightly acidic soil. So farmers thus need to adjust the pH of the soil to make sure that the crops are best suited for that condition. And also swimming pools, they need to add some stuff into swimming pools and so that you can kill some bacteria but you can't change the pH too much because you don't want to dip yourself in strong base or strong acid. That hurts. So it's still slightly uh, basic but close to neutral. Okay, so we need to control the pHs of certain things for a desired effect. Okay, so that is one application of pH. And your blood, you might not know this, but your body certainly does. If you go to the hospital, you can get a lot of measurements for your body. You can check your blood pressure. You can check your body temperature. You can check your blood glucose level, your blood sugar. Uh, you can check, I don't know, what else can you check in a hospital? You can get tested for COVID. Um, you can do many things in the hospital, but the doctors never test your blood pH. That is not a test that they will run on you. You might get a blood test, but they're not going to look for the pH in your blood test. They're going to look for other things in your blood. You don't need a blood test or for pH. Why? Because if your pH of the blood is different from what it's supposed to be, it's very noticeable. You're going to be either unconscious or dead. Okay. The fact that you're conscious and walking around, you're complaining that it hurts, that means your blood pH is normal. Uh, oh, hypochlorous is basic. Yeah, no, they do add that. They add some chlorines in there, but that's actually a base, not an acid. Um, as to why it's more grade 12 math-ish than grade 10 math. Does that make sense? So anyway, the pH of your blood is very specific. It is three point, sorry, it is 7.35 plus and minus 0 0.05. If your blood pH is outside of this range, you won't be conscious. And if it's outside of 7 and 7.8, you are dead. All right, so when you eat food, how come you don't die from drinking lemonade, right? Because lemonade is acidic. You drink that, wouldn't that go into your blood? Because we learned that in biology. Food goes into your digestive system, which gets sucked up by your blood, which carries it all over the body. So how come you don't die from eating a tomato? Well, that's because there's things in your blood called buffers. Their job is to prevent your blood pH from changing. They literally have one job. So that when you eat something, when something goes inside your blood and tries to change the pH, these buffers will make sure that it doesn't happen. How do you know it's working? Because you're alive. If it doesn't work, you're dead. That, it's that simple. If you don't have buffers, drinking lemonade is suicide eating actually eating just about anything is suicide because that would change your blood ph so your blood ph cannot change which is why you have these buffers they work really well to make sure that your blood has only one ph so the doctors in the hospital they never test it because they don't need to so let's go back to alkaline diet that garbage that's floating around on the internet First of all, the premise is the your body is acidic and acidic bodies are not healthy. Remember we learned about all of these systems? 
the circulatory system, the nervous system, the respiratory system, the digestive system, the skeletal and the muscular. If you test the pH of your body, it depends on where. Different systems have different pHs. Like, for example, the circulatory system, blood, has a pH of 7.35 because that's the pH of the blood. Otherwise, you're dead. In fact, most of your body has a pH of 7.35 because blood runs everywhere in your body. Except the digestive system. The stomach has a pH of around 2 because of stomach acid. Your intestines, depending on where, has the pH fluctuating between acidic versus slightly basic. Okay, but the rest of your body is actually not acidic at all. The claim that your body is acidic and that makes you unhealthy is complete garbage. Your body, if anything, is basic, not acidic. So that's a lie right out of the gate. Okay, and then like these people will make you do a test, you know, you know, acidic body is dangerous. Okay, these charlatans, okay, these con men, they know some science. That's how they lie to you. They know the basic science. They're willing to bet that you don't know the science so that they can bullcrap their way into your wallet. So they're going to start with a scientific statement. The pH of your blood should be basic. Otherwise, it's unhealthy. That's correct. That's what we just learned. The pH of your blood must be 7.35. And then these quacks then go, okay, so wake up in the morning, right? Go to the bathroom, take a Q-tip, right? Get some saliva from your cheek and then use my device to test the pH. Test the pH of your saliva and you're going to realize the pH is around 6. Uh-oh. That's acidic. You have a problem. You need to get these alkaline water and alkaline diet to balance the pH of your body so that it's 7.3 again. That's, that's actually one of the tricks that they pull. Notice that they kind of cheated there. The pH of the blood should be 7.3, no problem. So go in the morning and test your saliva. You, you, see, the, you see the con here? That's not the same thing, is it? Saliva is saliva. Blood is blood. Saliva is supposed to have a pH of 6. If your saliva has a pH of 6, congratulations, you're normal. Okay, so they try to fool you in, with pseudoscience because not everyone knows what the pH of your body should be. So that's how they get you. Okay, so some parts of the body needs to be acidic, like your stomach. If you don't have an acidic stomach, I worry for you. Okay, so... Your body needs to uh, change. Uh, your body needs to keep the pH the same, wherever that is. It's not supposed to change at all. Your body does a pretty good job of this. You don't need a diet to help you with that. If your body is unable to do that and needs help, then you should be hooked up in a hospital. You shouldn't be walking around. Okay, so drinking or eating. Even if this is true, that your body does need help, drinking and eating is not going to help because there's buffers in your blood. Okay, that's a good thing. Drinking any water, any orange juice, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, you name it, that is not going to change the pH of your body because if it did, you wouldn't be here. So this is all scientific, well, pseudo-scientific quackery. Don't fall for it. If you just Next time you hear someone mention this or on the internet, ignore it. If someone is really trying to sell this to your face, call them out, call them out on their stupidity because these ideas need to be criticized. They need to be ridiculed and made fun of. Okay, this dude, oh God, I hate this guy. If you Google alkaline diet, you're gonna get many websites and they seem legit. Okay, when I ask you to do your research for your assignment, I ask, Make sure you make uh, you know that the sources that you're citing are actual credible sources. Okay, you you don't want to go on some person's personal blog or some pseudo scientific nonsense new age website and they tell you all of these fake claims and you oh okay I'm gonna write that down in my report. You have to be able to tell good sources from the bad ones. So if you actually search alkaline diet, click on the links, 
they say a lot of outrageous things. And then you, you fact check them. You, you go to credible established sources like the Canadian Cancer Society, cancer.ca, National Center for Biotechnology Information. Now, that's a really good one, ncbi.gov. Um, these websites will just straight up tell you that this is complete garbage. Do not fall for them. Alkaline diet is complete crap. Now, where did this idea come from? This dude, Robert Young, uh, he, he wrote a book about alkaline diets. He, he started this whole thing, and he, he went to talk shows, seminars, telling people, promoting his book, telling them about the alkaline diet and how healthy that is and how acidic bodies are bad. And he, he has a lot of followers. Like who This guy is almost like a tiny cult. A cult is a bit strong of a word. But pretty much, yeah, people believed him fanatically. They worshipped his authority. So that, that's when you see that there's a problem. If you ever see a group of people, they follow this person fanatically. doesn't matter what that person does or says, they're always right. Yeah, question that organization. Like Robert Young had that cult following, like North Korea. Kim Jong-un is always right. It doesn't matter what he says. He's always right. If you say he's wrong, you disappear. Or no one says he's wrong. Like the election in North Korea, Kim Jong-un is elected with 100% of the votes. That's, he's elected. But do you really trust that? So Robert Young is kind of like that. He got arrested, thankfully, in 2014. He was convicted, unfortunately, not of charlatan being a quack, but he got convicted of theft and practicing medicine without a license. Obviously, he doesn't have a license. No self-respecting doctor would believe in an alkaline diet. He, this guy knows nothing. He basically made something up. He made it look scientific, and he tried to con people of their money. And he's in prison which made a lot of his followers sad and that made them more devout that you can they go on the internet they go on youtube and leave comments like robert young like the government is bad why do we silence this great man he cured me of insert disease here you know he should be released i will always support him you know don't trust the internet don't trust doctors don't trust medicine you know, trust this guy so there's this really sad story you know, he was sued and he was asked to pay 105 million dollars in reparations because there was a cancer patient that saw him and he persuaded that patient to not do any treatment but take his i don't know what he call it his alkaline diet treatment instead that that cancer patient wasn't terminally ill but because that patient didn't actually get any real treatment that got a lot worse and he the the patient died of cancer and then the family sued him and the court found him guilty. And he, yeah, that's the story of Robert Young. Even with that, he still has followers. And that's how crazy these personality cults can be. Yeah, be very careful about worshiping someone and their ideas. You have to criticize everybody. It doesn't matter how much you like the person. Um, there's a lot of people I look up to but if they do something stupid, I'm there to condemn them. And yeah, the, the, please make sure you don't fall for shenanigans like this. I'm just putting this out there because this guy deserved to be shamed. Uh, this guy deserved to be called out because he's making money off of people's suffering. He's taken advantage of sick people. Instead of giving them life-saving actual treatment, he will sell them his fake treatment he doesn't care if they're dead. He gets the money. So, yeah, these people are absolutely disgusting. Anyway, so let's wrap up the lesson here. So to summarize, acid versus base, 
acid tastes sour, they're corrosive, some will burn, depend on how concentrated the acid is. They are good conductors of electricity, they corrode metal, the pH is from zero to seven, releases H plus, and turns limits red. Okay, base is the other column, it's bitter. They're both corrosive, base is just as corrosive as acid. Slippery, and again, it will burn. It conducts electricity. It does not react with metals. pH is quite high, 7 to 14. Releases hydroxide and turns litmus blue. Okay, so you need to know the properties of acid and base. You need to know this chart, basically. You need to know the pH scale, okay, what that means, and what those numbers mean, and how do you compare those numbers? Okay, the difference of one means 10 times difference. Okay, did that make sense? That's basically it for this lesson. Any questions? All right. Okay, I'm going to stop this.